Hello, hi, welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today is a very exciting video because this is the highly requested swatching all of my phytosurgeons. So if you watch my declutter, you know that I have two small containers full of phytosurgeons. I have them set out in front of me. We've got 20 products to swatch. So everyone say a silent prayer for my skin because we're going to be doing eye and cheek swatches as well as arm swatches. So I've made sure my lighting is accurate and we're gonna dive right into this. So in order to keep this somewhat short, I am not going to go into depth about phytosurgeons. However, I do have a video on my channel that deep dives into the company a little bit more, which I will link in the cards. I will say though, just quickly, phytosurgeons is one of my top three favorite brands um, out there at the current moment, and I don't foresee that changing. It is my very favorite blush formula. We'll talk a little bit about formulas as we get into those. I also really love the eyeshadow formula and the um, spectral shine is amazing at blurring the skin. So I love phytosurgeons. I love Jason and Tom. If you are not fully familiar with them, I highly encourage you to go check out the phytosurgeons Instagram. It is a wealth of knowledge, not only about the products themselves and how to apply, but just getting to know the founders is so much fun. Jason is such a sweet, sweet person and his lives that he does. I'm not hundred percent sure if it's a specific day of the week. I'll pop on the screen if it is, but those are so fun to kind of understand his thoughts around formulating what might be coming next, getting to know him and Tom. They're just incredible people and we really connect on a Virgo level, but also the kind of sciency inspiration that comes into a lot of this, I fully am down with. So I am so happy to be doing this today. Let's go ahead and jump in to blush. So for the purpose of today, I only have a little bit of Kosas concealer on just so my rosacea doesn't completely <laughs> change the color of the blush that we're using. And then I also have a little bit of brows on. I'm going to be applying with the Phytosurgeons Sky Fluff brush, which is a beautiful brush for cream products. Very kind of flexible, but still dense enough to really blend out like a dream. The hairs on this, interestingly enough, are coated. So even though they're white, they're not going to stain. I have used a hot pink Vision Flush from Danessa Myricks and left it on the brush for a while and was almost certain that it was going to stain. It did not. This brush is $18 Canadian, which translate to $12.98 American, which is an incredible deal, especially for the quality. There's no shedding. They're gorgeous, all white. Love it so much. So we're going to use that. And I'm actually going to start with the core collection of blushes. So there's the core collection of blushes, and then they just came out with the toasted shades. So I have all of the toasted shades, and I have six, five. I can't count. I have five from the original line. So the first one that I'm going to show is Fume, which is quite possibly the best blush of all time. And let me go ahead and I'll grab an arm swatch for you. I'm probably going to be just inserting the arm swatches because I'm terrible at them, but I'm just going to go straight into this with my brush and we'll talk a little bit about the formula. So they describe this formula as a truffle, the inside of a truffle from chocolate. What is happening with my words? And I couldn't agree more. If you have ever been in the Pittsburgh area and you have tried Sarah's chocolate, let me know down below. But these do remind me of like the center of the melt away because they they look like they're going to be very moussey. Let me see if I can get a shot. There we go. Going to be very moussey. And while they are, they go on so smooth and creamy and they really start to kind of become emollient when you swatch them on your arm. You can see kind of the shine there. But they do have a bit of a set down and that is Fume on Sheer, because that's the other thing. These are very pigmented. That is just one swipe up here, concentrated, and this is blended out a little bit. So you can see, while in the container, Fume is like a very dusty rose. On my skin tone, which I should have prefaced that 
I'm sorry I've never done this video, but my skin tone is very fair and it is neutral with a lot of yellow and green in the undertone. And what happens is a lot of blush just turns kind of pink or red on my skin. So you'll see once I build Fume up, it looks quite rosy. So that's why this is looking a little different from the pan, but depending on your undertones, this could stay a very beautiful dusty rose. On me, it's a little bit truer of a rose, but this is my favorite everyday blush. All right, I have wiped the excess off my brush. It's not perfect, but that's where we're at. The next shade I want to talk about is Fervor, which is a beautiful kind of berry pink shade. And again, you see kind of that moussey texture. We'll do a nice arm swatch here. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just gonna go straight in with my brush and tap a little bit on. And you'll see it's so easy to just tap these on. So there is a light layer of fervor. You'll see much more kind of purple berry compared to fume. Such a very pretty color, especially for spring and fall when you want that kind of blood has risen to the cheek. There's a few of those and there's gonna be a couple different flavors of that. So this is a little bit cooler. I love this shade and then we're gonna build it up a little bit. Doing the same thing. And these work into the skin so easy. This is just my favorite blush formula, hands down. There you can see, this is kind of like the true color of my rosacea, so this is a very believable blush on me. But you can see Fume's gonna be a lot more kind of brown and orange almost, not in a bad way, but compared to kind of the coolness, berry tone of Fervor. All right, back and blanked out. I'm gonna wipe my brush off here. And now we're going to be moving in to the last pink shade, which is Singe, which is kind of just a classic middle of the road pink. And again, dipping my brush in, we'll go for a light layer to start. As you can see, this one is a little bit brighter, more pink. There's almost a little peach coming through because of my undertones, but a very, very pretty color. It is, yeah, kind of a yellowy melon pink to me, but very beautiful kind of classic blush look. We'll build it up just a little bit. That's a lot of bit, but we'll blend it so you can really see the color. There is Singe. So then next we're gonna be moving into kind of the pumpkin terracotta world with the shade Smolder, which this is like almost faded clementine in a blush form to me. It is like a toasty pumpkin shade that I absolutely love for fall, especially when you wanna achieve that pumpkin pie toasty look, you know? And again, going straight in with the brush after I have wiped it off. This is gonna be a really cool kind of side-by-side -side to show you just how pumpkin-y this is. I love it so much. So there is a light layer. You can see next to Singe, this is quite pink and not typically the color that I go for really. This, however, is, if you are kind of a muted autumn, this is an incredible color for you. Same with Fume, but this one, oh, I feel like it needs more hype especially as we go into fall and you want that kind of pumpkin-y look. Obviously you can build it up to be quite strong, but it's so nice. And if you find yourself as someone who likes a little bit more orangey undertones in your bronzer and you are fair to light, I think that this could also work kind of in a bronzy area. So that is Smolder versus Singe. All right, and then moving into the last blush shade from the Core line, which is Inferno, and we're taking it even a little bit 
deeper than that smolder, smolder shade. So this is going to be more terracotta and deeper and even toastier if that is possible. So we're gonna go in lightly first. And this is also one that I really love for fall and if you are more muted, this is a color that just has a beautiful kind of nuance to it. All of these colors look great. I think some are more natural for cool undertones like Singe and Fervor, although I can get away with them. These kind of live more at home on my cheek, so I'm actually gonna add just a touch more so you can see. It has red, but it also has kind of like a burnt orange or sienna to it absolutely incredible very natural kind of flush on the cheeks especially if you want to go with something a little bit warmer but not too warm that it doesn't just read orange it's the same with smolder while smolder has a little bit of oranginess to it and a pumpkin to it you can tell that there's a little bit of gray and beige added in there to mute it down perfectly the same can be said with this but muted down with more of like a chocolate brown so let's build this up even more I keep getting ahead of myself. So these, again, are very, very pigmented, but they blend so easy, and it's very easy to pick up just a touch as you're seeing with my first application. So there is Inferno. And that wraps the core line. So let me throw those swatches on my hand, and we'll move in then to the toasted shades. All right, so up top we have Fume. Then we have Fervor, Singe, Smolder, and Inferno. Gorgeous shades. You can see the nuance as we have them here. So I think these two, even though this Singe shade has quite a bit of warmth, I think these two might be better suited to cool undertones. I think Fume could flex because it's the most neutral to cool or warm. And then I think if you have a touch of warmth in your skin, these are going to look absolutely beautiful, this um, Smolder and Inferno. So I've got a bare cheek. We're gonna move into my very favorite of the blushes, which is the toasted shades that he just dropped. So I think Evaporate's going to be the best to do on this cheek to compare next to that Inferno because it is kind of a toasty peach shade that is absolutely stunning. I Surprisingly, I thought that Condensate would be the blush that I wore every day because it is the toasted version of Peach. The toasted version of Fume, Peach on the Brain. But I actually do pick up Condensate quite a bit. It's absolutely lovely. And yes, you guessed it, these toasted shades are going to be so flattering if you have a muted chroma that we talked about in my Color Theory 101 video. So there is Evaporate, which I absolutely love. That is so, you'll see the difference. This is kind of more of a vibrant color when we get into more muted colors. Because I am so muted and neutral, this is where these super beautiful blushes shine and sing. I can't even get words out, I'm so excited. So let's build that up. And you'll see, I want to say Evaporate is the toasted version of Smolder, but I will correct myself on the screen. Look at that. Even compared to this, you can tell that this kind of lives naturally in my coloring, whereas this is a little bit more intense, but this is kind of like a statement blush for me, whereas this can flex to a lot of different looks. So that is Evaporate next to Inferno. All right, we're blanked out once again, and we're gonna move into kind of the red and browns of the Toasted Collection. So first I'm gonna go in with Sublimate, which is a beautiful toasted cherry almost. It has quite a bit of chocolate brown in there as well. There we go. So far my cheeks are not upset and I think it's because I extra moisturized with Phytosurgeons, Sea Submerge, and Verdant Force Field and these are not drying whatsoever to the skin. 
So there is a first light layer of sublimate, which I believe is, I'll have to pop up on the screen what it's a toasted version of, but you can tell once again that these seem to be a little bit more native to my skin. And it has kind of like, again, that cherry base with a little bit of brown and gray in. And I'm gonna build that up slightly because this is one of my favorite colors for fall. This really nailed kind of a berry cheek for me without being too cool and pairing with reds super well. Oh, it's fall, it's fall in a jar. So that's sublimate. Next, let's go into exothermic, which is going to be a little bit more brown and plum. So not red, probably a touch of purple and a lot of chocolate brown in this one. And this one I really love to put towards the bottom and back of my cheekbones, almost here, because it is kind of cool enough to work as a contouring blush. So there's a light layer. You can see next to sublimate that it is quite cooler and a little bit more brown, beige. So let's go ahead and build that up so you can really see the color. And what I love about this one is if you are not new here, you know that my very favorite powder blush is the Balm Desert Bronzer Blush. This is almost that, but a little bit deeper and cooler. I love it. Another kind of unexpected absolute favorite, plus the word exothermic. I'm nerding out because you know that I get my nails done quite a bit, and when you get gel done, when it feels a little spicy on the nail, that's an exothermic reaction happening. So I just love it. The thought that goes into this whole line, I just love it. So there is exothermic next to sublimate. So a much kind of cooler, more beige, brown, chocolatey sister. All right, so last but absolutely not least of the blushes is condensate, which I knew that this would be my very favorite as it is the toasted version of fume so it's fume with a little bit of gray and coolness added to it and it's good this was the dupe that i have been searching for of ColourPop aphrodisiac and when i tell you that that made my whole life complete it did so i hope that this shade never goes anywhere because that was years in the making finding a dupe for that so nothing on this cheek condensate on this cheek this is my perfect everyday neutral nude quote unquote blush it really straddles the line of warm and cool enough that it it, it remains neutral on me and it looks a very kind of purple or lavender gray in the pan, but you see how it's just kind of like a natural flush on me because of my undertones. If you have similar undertones to me with kind of green and yellow, you lean a little warm, but for the most part you're neutral, this is the blush that you need in your collection. If you're muted, this is the blush that you need in your collection. If you're scared of purple, this is the blush you need in your collection. It is going to bridge that gap so well for you and I'm going to end it on this blush because it's my favorite blush that can go with everything. It turns just the slightest bit pink, enough for me to feel like it's a natural kind of rosy glow for me. And let's talk about the finish now that we've put them all on. You'll see that it keeps a lot of that dewiness around and very, very skin-like. I am extremely dewy kind of underneath and it keeps that finish. Now, if I were more satin, it's going to kind of keep that more satin finish, but make no mistake, these are kind of dewy blushes. But let's go ahead and swatch Toasted next to the core collection. All right, so in the same order that we applied, we have Evaporate, Sublimate, Exothermic, and Condensate. You'll see that these two are very similar. I would say the difference is that this is a little bit more chocolate and warm, whereas this really does lean into kind of that lavender gray purple. But if I show you these two side by side, you can see 
The core collection has a lot more vibrancy to it. So the toasted shades are very true to that toasted name. So if you are muted, I would go with the toasted shades and then maybe you could incorporate some of these shades that we talked about before like Fume, Inferno, and Smolder. But there are my Phytosurgeon's blushes. All right, so now let's talk a little bit about the Spectral Shine products. So I have here Divine Daylight and Fresh Fog. These are a little bit trickier to swatch. So what I think I want to do is apply one to each side of the cheek so you can get an idea. Now the Spectral Shine products come in at 32 Canadian dollars, which is 23 American dollars. You get quite a lot of product because I have really worked my Divine Daylight and it looks like I've barely touched it. Now these are not as kind of user-friendly, self-explanatory as the blushes. However, once you learn how to use these, they're phenomenal and they're worth it. And I should be using my Phytosurgeon's brush, which is the Sky Buff. And that comes in at 16 Canadian dollars, which is about 11.54 US, another amazing brush. Same qualities as the Sky Fluff, but mine needs washed very badly. So we're going to go in with a Spectrum Katie Jane Hughes 03 brush. And we are going to talk about this formula a little bit. So if you touch it, it feels like you're not touching anything and you have to really work in the pan. Again, check out Phytosurgeon's Instagram if you're curious, but see, I've picked up a little bit. You really have to work the brush in quite a bit to pick up product. But trust me, the finish of these, I do not want the formula to change whatsoever. So you can see I've picked up some on my brush and I'm going to tap at first and then I'm going to kind of swirl to kind of work that product into my skin. And what you are left with, and actually I'm gonna take it up under my eyes because that's how I use Divine Daylight. I'm gonna pick up a little bit more, really working the brush in and swirling. So I'm a very dewy gal to begin with. So the first thing to note is that this is very close to my skin tone and that was on purpose. But if you can tell a difference here, I'll zoom in. This looks just blurred. The texture is really blurred. Whereas on this side, you get a lot more kind of texture, especially in the light. This is just more diffused. So this is not going to be a blinding highlight. It is going to be kind of a light diffusing refracting product. And that's why I like to bring it up here because it really does kind of blur those pores and it does kind of set the concealer that you have on. And that's my favorite way to wear this product. It is not sticky at all. It's just that gorgeous diffused light. I really hope that it is showing up. And it doesn't show any glitter. It just looks airbrushed. Ugh. Best highlight award goes to Phytosurgeons. And of course the blush, you know. But that said, I have here Fresh Fog, which is going to be lighter which actually I mix this one with blush a lot. So there's a little coating of blush on the top. So I'm gonna wipe that off. That's a little better, <laughs> but this one is much lighter, but still kind of a champagne. It's not, I think Mirrored Moonlight is the one that you're gonna look for if you want a tiny bit icier, but none of them are so icy that you can't wear them. Divine Daylight is just golden peach and much closer to my skin tone so that I like that here. But let's go ahead and do the same here where we're tapping and then I'm just going to work that product in. Trust me, when you first get these, you're going to be like, what am I doing wrong? I don't see anything. But it is a very, very nuanced highlight in that, like I said, it's not giving you a blinding highlight. You can see it kind of took down some of the shine like here on my forehead that's kind of like a not very flattering shine and it just diffuses light and you can see it is a tiny bit more silver just a touch and a little bit more brightening but oh it's so pretty and again you could use the trick where you're kind of blurring the pores here it's just going to be a little bit more brighter of an effect than the divine daylight 
So those are the spectral shines. Trust me, they're worth the learning curve. If you're new to phytosurgeons and you pick that up, don't be discouraged if it takes you a minute to learn how to use the product. Please go check out their Instagram. They have a lot of good tutorials on how to use that, how to mix it with blush. There, It's an incredible resource. The same with the blushes. They have a lot of kind of mixing and matching. Please go check out their Instagram. I love these two products so very much. The brushes are absolutely phenomenal. This just put in so much work and I know for a fact that when I wash it, it will not be stained. And I can't say enough about that because white bristles always make me a little nervous, you know. But I hope this was so very helpful. Next, we're going to be jumping in to live eye swatches. So I hope you'll stick around for that. And yeah, let's hop to it. All right, following a similar cadence to what we did with blushes, I have two from the initial launch of the Flash Fluorescence Eyeshadows. I have three from the Weathered Woods collection, and then I have three from the In Bloom collection, which is their glitter topper. So even though it's out of order, I'm gonna save the glitter toppers till the end because I foresee that being the messiest. And we're gonna start with the original launch, which first up I have Wild Oak, which is a beautiful gold. And to apply these, I'm just gonna use the good old phalanges, which my favorite trick if you have long nails is to set your nail on the edge of the jar and then twist the jar around and you will pick up plenty of eyeshadow. So, Let's go ahead and add kind of a sheer layer first. And these are just as user-friendly as the blushes. They're not quite as dewy. They're definitely gonna set down. They don't crease. They're just beautiful. You can apply them sheer and kind of buff them out with your finger like I am. You can use brushes with these as well. But there is a first layer of Wild Oak. almost like a burnished gold, like an antique gold. It's so pretty, such an easy kind of one and done. So I'm gonna take my finger again and build that up. And you can get intensity, but what I love about these is they are not kind of a liquid metal eyeshadow. They're this perfect kind of satin sheen. They're just so pretty. So there is Wild Oak built up, and you saw how easy that was. I didn't have to take a long time to blend. It just kind of blends itself, which is much appreciated. I think all of Phytosurgence is great for beginners, maybe minus the Spectral Shine, which just takes honestly two seconds of watching an Instagram reel and you'll be an expert, but super beginner friendly or someone who wants just like a quick out the door makeup look. So there's Wild Oak, which is that kind of burnished gold. Next, I have Velvet Leaf, which is a beautiful kind of khaki army green. And we're gonna go light on the first application. I'm actually gonna pick up a little bit extra there. There we go. Some fingers with nails work with that trick and some fingers don't. I find that my middle finger usually does the best there. But there we have Velvet Leaf. Now with the Wild Oak, you get kind of like a burnished gold or kind of tan base with gold flecks in it to give that shine. With Velvet Leaf, you have kind of a khaki, dusty olive green, and then it has honestly a little bit of gold and green to it more green and it is slightly cool but let's go ahead and build that up so you can see what i mean just the most beautiful kind of sheen yeah just a touch of gold in there but see how it's almost like the base pigment mixed with the shimmers. It gives you such a multi-dimensional look when you start bringing it up into the crease that it is truly kind of a one and done that still gives you dimension. But here we have Wild Oak and Velvet Leaf. All right, next up we're moving into the Weathered Woods collection, which is so gorgeous. It is kind of the, in the same vein to me as the toasted shades where this is a little bit more 
These are very kind of muted shades on their own. All these eyeshadows are a muted girl's dream. Boy's dream, they's dream. It's just a dream for anyone who's muted. However, the Weathered Woods collection takes it a step further and it's that smoky, muted, ugh, gorgeous colors. And we're gonna kick it off with Magnetic Maple, which I have mentioned before. This is almost what I wish Charlotte Tilbury's, sorry, my nose itches. This is almost what I wish Charlotte Tilbury's, um, what is that shade everyone is gaga over? It was forever emblazoned in my brain and now I can't remember. What is that shade? I'll pop it on the screen, it's escaping me. But this is what I like the most out of those two compared to the Charlotte Tilbury. So again, I'm going to use my finger trick. All right, so going in with my finger, I'm gonna do a light layer of this. And I really like mixing this one or using this one even to add kind of a little bit to the outer corner. So there's kind of a light layer. I'll add a little bit up into my crease. So there is a magnetic maple, which is, and I hope that this is showing up, a very subtle, it looks almost kind of gunmetally, but it has a little bit, I honestly see a little bit of gold, definitely some kind of, it, it's just very taupe, I think is what I'm trying to say, but there's like a little bit of brown, gold, and purple to it. I really love it, so let's go ahead and build that up. This is a perfect eyeshadow for my nails, and you can get quite moody with this, which you know I love a smoky, moody eye. And these might be a little messy, forgive me. All right, so there is Magnetic Maple. Gorgeous, gorgeous. I think the light's catching a lot more of the silver, but you'll see on the hand swatch when we get through these exactly what that looks like. And I think a good comparison next to it's going to be Chilled Cherry, which is the second shade that I have. Again, it kind of looks almost gunmetally gray in the jar. Using my finger trick again, let's do a light layer on this eye. I love this one so much, especially with Defiant Dahlia that we're gonna get into in a minute on top. Oh. It is like the quick, moody, purpley eyeshadow of my dreams. So there is a light layer of Chilled Cherry. You can see now on the eye, this is giving a lot more kind of taupey, silvery vibes. Whereas this, we're getting into kind of like that cherry shade. But let's build it up just a little bit. I say a little bit, but we're gonna go in here. And these feel so lightweight, like nothing is on the eye. Oop, I knew we were gonna get messy at some point. <laughs> All right, so there is Chilled Cherry built up. Next to Magnetic Maple, you can see there's almost a touch more warmth to this, even though it is kind of that darker, purpley cherry red. Absolutely stunning. All right, last up in the Weathered Woods collection is going to be Oxidized Olive. So the smokier kind of brother sister to Velvet Leaf. And I love this one because they describe it as like a green, but not really a green because again, it has way more of that kind of bronzy taupe than green, but it does have kind of like almost a flash of green that just makes it so fun, especially if you have green eyes. So I'm gonna go in with a touch of that. I'm getting very messy, y'all. All right, so there 
is oxidized olive. Again, it's it's green, but it's not green. It's that smoky taupe with just a touch of green and gold, and it really kind of brings out the green in my eyes, which I absolutely love. So let's build that up now. It's so pretty. I need to wear this one much more than I do. So there is oxidized olive built up. Again, very moody, very green. If you're being more careful, like I am not being, you can easily blend these out very nicely with a finger and it gives you that amazing dimension without having to work hard at it. I am gonna clean this up because it's gonna drive me nuts. So again, oxidized olive. And now we're going to move in to the in bloom collection i have two of the discontinued shades and two of the shades that are still available so let's jump in to the deeper of the two still available which is defiant dahlia which is probably my favorite shade granted there's one that we're going to play with i haven't played with yet but i do believe this is my favorite shade now these are described as glitter toppers and you'll see when we go through hand swatches of these that they are indeed glittery this one is almost like a deep antique copper that's very neutral that has like purple silver and gold in it it's so good so again i'm gonna go with a light layer to just show you what adding a tiny bit of sparkle will do to a shadow you get a tiny bit of that base pigment but nothing kind of crazy adds just a touch of kind of that rusty coppery mauve color and then the shimmer is very beautiful there's kind of a mixture of gold silver and pink with like that pink reflect it, it's so beautiful multifaceted and we're gonna build that up because this is my like i said very favorite shade of all the flash fluorescents you know i love glitter there's built up and then here's really built up these can offer a lot of impact the more that you build or they can be a sheer topper so there is defiant dahlia next to oxidized olive oh, i love this shade and next we're going to move into two of the lighter glitter toppers all right, moving into the next two shades, we're going to be talking about Fractal Freesia, which is still available. And then I did pick up Orchid Overload, which is unfortunately no longer available, but I will swatch it for you in case they do sometimes bring things back. I don't know if there's any plans to, please don't harass them about that. But just in case you'll have all the deets, you know? So Orchid Overload is the second newest to me the rest i've had either when they came out or for a little over a year now orchid overload is a very very light pink peachy base almost beige and it has purple pink silver and gold glitters it's just it is a glitter bonanza with a touch of pink to the theme if that makes sense so there is a first layer I mean, it just offers the shine, you know, so much shine. Hopefully the lighting is doing it justice, but we're going to build that baby up. Because you can never have too much glitter. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. So there is Orchid Overload built up. Then next, let's get into Fractal Freesia, which is more of a golden beige base, and its shimmers are... It almost looks... They all look like they have a bit of rainbow glitter to them, but this one comes off more kind of like gold and silver, but there is kind of multifaceted glitters. And this I absolutely love, especially for tapping over the top of any look, just to give it the tiniest little bit of pizzazz without committing to like a ton of glitter 
I put this on just about everybody that I did wedding makeup for just so they felt a little, you know, fancy that day. It just doesn't compete. It just adds a beautiful kind of golden sparkle to the eye. So I'm just gonna press that in. So there's Fractal Freesia next to Orchid Overload, but I'm gonna build Fractal Freesia, Fractal Freesia up so that it is on par next to that Orchid Overload. So as you can see, they both add incredible shine where Fractal Freesia kind of gets away being a little less over the top than Orchid Overload, I think because Orchid Overload has a little bit more of that silver and pink to it, whereas Fractal Freesia kind of stays in that golden place, but it's absolutely the best glitter topper out there. These do not have fallout, but just remember that I'm applying, wiping away, applying, so you're gonna see a little bit underneath here. <laughs> we can't be helped. The last shade, I think I'm going to wear on my eyes. So let's go clean this up and apply the final shade. All right, now that I'm absolutely covered in glitter, let's go into the last shade, which is also limited edition or discontinued, excuse me, but you never know. Wild Wisteria, which I love the name, but the shade. You can see I have not touched this one yet. It is a very pretty kind of lilac, mid-tone lilac. Ooh, and she has glitter, so let's take a look at her. Oh, a witch's dream. Like, this is such a cute, like, witchy Halloween. I mean, you can wear this color at any time of the year, but especially as we move into October. It again has kind of that multicolored glitter, not so, not as much as the others, but it has like silver is what I'm picking up the most. So let's go ahead and do a light layer of this bad boy. See how you can get such a light layer where it's like a wash of this lilac that has a decent amount of red, which I'm very happy about. But then we can also, I'll leave one kind of sheer and we'll do one built up. This is absolutely gorgeous. I cannot believe that I missed out on this. And as you can see, if you want something really built up, I just scraped some out with my nail because <laughs> I'm a savage. But, oh, so pretty. See, especially I have, what did I do? See how I've built this up and while you get sheen when you don't have it built up, you get more color impact but you get more glitter and sheen and that can be said even with the original collection. That is why I love these, they're so versatile. Again, when you add them all the way up into the crease they give just enough dimension. They're an absolute beautiful formula. So let's go ahead and review the arm swatches that I have. So again, as you can see, outside of Wild Wisteria, these are a muted person's dream. Absolutely phenomenal. So we have Wild Oak, which is that first golden, slightly copper shade. Then we have Velvet Leaf, which is a taupe base with green shifting gold. Then we have Magnetic Maple, a true taupe, the little bit of silver to it. Then we have Chilled Cherry, which which gets us into kind of a more purple, red cherry, if you will, duh, of the Smoky Collection. Then we have Oxidized Olive, which as you can see next to Velvet Leaf, while this has green to it, it's exactly like they say, it's not a green shade. It just has green to it, but these two together are absolutely phenomenal. So we have the top two from the core collection, the bottom three from the Weathered Woods. And then we have our In Bloom collection. So up top we have Defiant Dahlia, which is still available. And you can see Defiant Dahlia next to those chilled cherry. Let's see, there we go. I love those two together. I also love it with the green. It really plays on some of those brown undertones. Absolutely gorgeous. Then we have Orchid Overload, which is no longer available, but is the kind of pink leaning glitter topper. Underneath that, we have Fractal Freesia, which is where I would absolutely start with the glitter toppers anyway. 
Fractal Freesia is just kind of a workhorse for me anytime I want to add a little bit of glitter without detracting from the look. And then we have Wild Wisteria, which is stunning. So again, we have top two on this hand from Core Collection, the bottom three from Weathered Woods, and then the In Bloom Collection that I own. So fabulous. So I'm going to clean myself up and I will be right back. All right, we we did it. I cannot believe it. I hope that this footage turns out okay. Also hope that it was helpful and you enjoyed it. I went ahead and finished my face. I added condensate onto my cheeks because it's my go-to, a little bit of gloss, and then I finished off the Wild Wisteria with some Orchid Overload in the center of the lid, and I feel pretty fabulous. I, I really do. So, Again, I hope that this was helpful. I do want to do a couple of closing words, you know. Phytosurgence is incredible from an ethics standpoint, from a transparency standpoint, from a formulation standpoint. They are some of the most innovative formulas. They will re-excite you about makeup. I have no doubt about it. And I highly encourage you to check them out. Their skincare is incredible. I've talked about Sea Submerge and Verdant Force Field till I am blue in the face and can say no more, but they're absolutely incredible products. I know they will save my skin from this swatching fest. And the last thing I want to share with you is if you saw my declutter videos, you know that I keep my phytosurgeons in these containers in the drawers of my vanity. I will link these specific containers below because they were made for phytosurgeons. Um, they also fit Victoria Beckham, which you'll see one in there, but I love putting my phytosurgeons snugly to bed at the end of a makeup day, specifically this one. They definitely put in work, and I hope that you enjoyed it. I hope you're doing well and having an amazing week, and hopefully I will see you in the next one. Everything will be listed and linked below. Please let me know if you want to see anything else with phytosurgeons. Or if you like this type of swatch video, let me know that too. And I will see you in the next one. Bye.